the concept of gender is relatively new and many people do not have a clear understanding about it. In fact, the word gender already existed in the dictionary. Did we not hear about it in our grammar classes? You recall the terms masculine, feminine and neuter gender? Clarity and especially a shared understanding of the concept of gender can help us analyze our own selves, our families and societies. We can thus have meaningful discussions on this issue. Instead of giving a definition to you, let's understand it with the help of an example and define it. So here it goes. I bring a newly born child into a room. The baby is naked except that its genitals are covered. Will we be able to tell whether the baby is a girl or a boy? Give me your answer. The answer is B. No. Because without looking at the genitals, we will not be able to say whether the child is a girl or a boy. That, friends, is the only difference between girls and boys or in the rare case of the third sex where the child has no clear genitals everything else in our bodies is exactly the same and for the next 10 to 12 years there will be no other sexual or biological differences between girls and boys in adolescence some changes will take place boys will have more hair on their faces and chests and their voices will become a little different the girls will start menstruating and their breasts will enlarge since nature believes in diversity these changes will not take place exactly in the same way at the same time in every human being. Now, pause for a moment and reflect. What do you think is the main purpose for the slight biological difference between males and females? Give me your answer. You are correct if your answer is D. Reproduction. It is for reproduction alone that nature has created biological differences between the male and female. And for reproduction, males and females have to cooperate. Nature has not made any other differences between males and females that anyone or any entity has the right to use as the basis to allot different roles, responsibilities and rights to them. Here it is important to mention that some human beings are born intersexed. Their sex is not clear. They may not have a well-formed penis or vagina or they may have a vagina but no uterus or other similar combinations. Friends, nature is not an assembly line factory. There can be and is a lot of diversity and it is good to accept and respect this diversity. Let us now move to another scenario. In a middle class home, say in South Asia, 
there is a birthday party of a seven to eight year old child. About thirty girls and boys have been invited. They have all come nicely dressed. Now looking at them, will we be able to say who's a girl, who's a boy? What do you think? Give me your answer. Mostly people say they can tell who is a boy and who is a girl looking at their dresses, hair, shoes, jewelry. For example, in most cases girls will be wearing earrings, bangles, maybe a necklace, maybe some cosmetics such as kajal, nail polish, also, the choice of their toys, games, attitudes and behavior provides the clue. Let's analyze this. One big difference in the clothing is the fact that the shorts or pants or shirts worn by all boys have pockets. Seldom would the girls' dresses have pockets. Hence, the boys have their hands free, where the girls are normally holding something in their hands and thus not free. Most things girls are wearing at the party are to make them look pretty. Do you realize dressing up in those pretty attires limits the mobility of girls, their speed, turning to games that the boys usually play are competitive and require physical exertion. The toys they have are guns, aeroplanes, cars and trucks, while girls usually play with dolls, utensils etc. It is clear that although there was, there was and is very little difference in the biology of the male and female, they have become very different human beings by the time they are a few years old. This is all due to their upbringing. They have been gendered. Gender is thus the socio-cultural definition of girls and boys, men and women, given by society. Our societies define what girls and boys should wear, what they should do, how they should be treated and what their rights and responsibilities will be. Because societies create gender, the definition can vary from society to society and time to time. Also, because human beings create gender, they can change it if they want to, if they are not happy with it. Now, as opposed to gender, sex is our biological definition. It is given to us by nature and is constant. It does not change from family to family and time to time. Except through hormonal treatment and surgeries, nobody can change their sex. Did you know among humans, even our bodies can be socially constructed? Humans are not slaves to their bodies. For example, women's bodies are such that we can procreate. However, not all women need to have children. They can decide not to have children. Humans can change the shape of their bodies. We can change the size and the strength of our bodies through training, use, disuse, misuse or abuse. Obvious examples are bodies of men and women wrestlers, 
bodybuilders, athletes, dancers, yoga practitioners, and so on. Body piercing, cosmetic surgeries, female genital mutilation or FGMs, and other examples of humans changing their natural bodies. Let us now use this gender lens to analyze our own lives. Let's see how we have been gendered and how gendering affected us. Please answer the following three questions with some honesty. A. When and how did you realize you were a girl or a boy? B. Was there gendering in your home when you were growing up? Are gender roles still prevalent in your family? And C. What has been your most painful experience as a girl or a boy, man or a woman? Pause your screen here and think about the answers. Write them down on a notepad. This is important, friends. You must write them down.